Hello, real estate investors. Today I'm standing in an apartment I just recently remodeled. And one of the things I did to make it look a little better was I updated all the outlets and switches and all the covered plates for those. Uh, what I had before was 30 plus year old ivory switches and outlets. They'd been painted over, they were dirty, a lot of the plates were cracked. So for a relatively small price and a few hours of labor, I was able to make the place look a lot more modern and definitely a lot cleaner. So today I want to go over the steps. If you want to do this in your, one of your rentals or in your own house, I'll go through the steps, how to make an inventory of what you need to buy, how to save some money buying that, and then I'll go through each individual device, what you need to look out for as your replacement. So with that, let's get started. Hi guys, to take an inventory, I just get a sheet of paper and go around, mark down what I've got. So this is a standard outlet with a single gang cover. Here's kind of a different one. It's a standard outlet, GFCI outlet, and then this kind of unique cover. So you may want to take a picture of that before you go to the store. And then for switches, this is just a single gang switch cover. Um, just a note, if you do have issues with your drywall behind these when you take them off, you can get larger covers. This is just a mid-sized cover, but they make jumbos to cover up uh, if your drywall ever made a mistake earlier. But to tell what switch you need, you really need to take the cover off and look inside. And I've got a couple of switches over here to show you. So this has one, two wires and a ground. So this is your standard single pole switch, which most in your house most likely will be these. But they also have these, which have one, two wires on this side, one wire over here and a ground. So three wires and a ground. This is a three-way switch, so make sure you note that so you get the right switches. We're at the store, standard outlet, single gang cover. Over here, you want to note this is a three-gang switch cover plate. And once again, you'll have to take, the, take this apart to see if you have three-way or standard switches in here. And then another thing you may run into is like the cover for this um, outlet for this air conditioner. Now this one has a, it's a 220 or a 250 volt 20 amp. And I don't know if you can see it, it's marked on here. These are dedicated outlets. So you need to get exactly what's in there if you're going to replace them. And you'll more likely see something like this. So this one is marked uh, uh, 15 amp, 125 volts. It could be 20 amp, but once again, dedicated outlet. You'll probably see these for things like your microwave, or for maybe a refrigerator or something like that. Um, but if you see these, make sure you figure out what they are and if you're gonna replace it, get the exact match to it. Some other things to keep an eye out for is like cable jacks. Here we have a phone jack. You may have some blank covers. And in here, so we have a two gang switch. Once again, take it apart to see what the switches are. Two gang switch cover, a GFCI outlet and a square plate for that. All right guys, once you have your inventory, I'm gonna go through a few ways to save some money on this, but quick disclaimer first, I'm not a licensed electrician. I do have a degree in electrical engineering. That's a total different field. So if you're not comfortable with this, consult a licensed electrician. So with that, some ways to save some money. One way is just to buy the standard outlets and switches. If you want the rocker switches or something like that, it's gonna be quite a bit more, so just know that going in. Another way to save some money is to buy these in 10 packs. So this is switches and outlets come in 10 packs as well as all your covers come in 10 packs as well. So that'll save you a few bucks buying them that way. Another way to cut down on costs a little bit is to get 15 amp devices. Now you can run 15 amp devices on 20 amp circuits or 15 amp circuits. What you can't do is take a 20 amp device and put it on a 15 amp circuit. Now the exception is what I noted earlier on those dedicated circuits, you need to go back with exactly what's there. So keep that in mind. And on GFCIs, um, I did use a 20 amp. You don't have to, I just feel better because this does um, not only the current that comes out here, it also monitors the current going to other devices. So I just feel better to put these uh, as 20 amps and I know I'm fine because the kit, I'm doing this in a kitchen and bath, which should always be a 20 amp circuit. So that should be fine there. I save money on these. Like one of these at Lowe's without a cover is 20, $22. I found these on Amazon and you do have to buy a six pack of them, but it works out to $7 and 50 cents a piece. 
and that includes the covers. So that is a way to save you quite a bit of money on buying this stuff. So with that, let's go change out some outlets. Guys, before you get started, obviously safety is important when we're working with electric. So you need to make sure your outlet is turned off. Now you could use something like this, we'll tell you. You could use a meter. I like using this because this device is not going to help you on a switch. This I can use on both, and it also gives a nice audible so I know when the electric's turned off. So you just hold it near where electric is, and it'll go off. You can also plug it in here. And the nice thing with that audible, I'll know when I hit, hit the right breaker. Alright, so now I know this is safe to work on. I'll just double check with this one. Yep, it's dead. Alright guys, so one thing you may want to do, I'm taking the screw out for this outlet cover. Now sometimes what will happen is either someone will cut in around these outlets with paint or they'll put the covers on before the paint dry. So sometimes you may need to take a utility knife and go around these and score it. Otherwise you'll peel your paint off. And here, this one's kind of sticking here, so I'm just going to go ahead and square it off. And then two, if these have been in for a while, this could be painted over here. And so you'll want to take your utility knife and go around and score all this off before you pull it free. So there's just two screws to take this off. But yeah, it's good if you, if you see this covered with paint, score around it both sides. That way you won't peel your paint off. All right, guys, change an outlet. Um, doesn't matter the direction I think typically people put them like that you can put them like that it doesn't matter but I think typically that's more standard to put them like that but when you're wiring these up your black goes to your gold connector and your white goes to your silver connector so white would go over here and then your ground wire goes to your green connector and when you put these wires on you see how that loops bent this way so you'd want to put it on this direction because that's the direction your screw is going to turn. So once you're tightening the screw, it'll bite in. Now it doesn't matter if you've got two black wires. It typically doesn't matter which one you put it on. As long as it's black on gold. But if you have this connector, which connects these two terminals together, if that's been removed, I would just wire it back the way it was and remove that connector. Probably what you have is like a switched upper outlet or lower one. And so I would just wire it back the way exactly the way it was but if it's in here which most of the time 95 plus percent of the time you're going to see these with these like that it doesn't matter which one you put it in now once i tighten this one down i go ahead and tighten this one down as well even though it's not uh doesn't have a wire i just don't want it sticking out it's a little bit of a safety hazard that you could hit the metal in the box somebody could in the future and then your white wire goes on your silver screw so remember the screw is going to turn this way so i want to put my loop that way and then your ground goes on your gold same way i want the loop to go that way because that's the way i'm going to be screwing it so that's all there is to changing an outlet all right guys for standard single pole switches these are the ones that only have two wires and a ground um, you want to have the orientation so that the off is up and the on is at the bottom, so you want to orient it like this. I'll show you the off and then the on. Now these two wires, it doesn't matter uh, which way, it, you know, if you take them off, you don't have to remember which was on the top and which was on the bottom. It'll work with, with them on either way. Now you may see a couple of black wires going to this. You may see a black and a white wire. And sometimes they'll even, they should tape this up to indicate that this has been used as a switch leg. A lot of times they don't, so it may look something like this, so just don't get confused. If you're saying, hey, that's a neutral on this circuit, that's fine. A lot of times they'll just use the black and the white, and the white's just part of the switch leg, um, or they will tape it up. Now on a three-way, you have to be a little more careful when you're taking this apart. So you'll want to look for this black screw, and this black screw will either be connected to your, um, to your uh, live wire coming in or going out to your load. So you need to note which wires on this. These two gold screws, if you flip those wires, that's not going to hurt anything. If you flip those two traveler wires, uh, that's fine. And always, as always with all these, you need to have your ground going to your green. But yeah, pay close attention. Maybe take a picture. 
and make sure you know which wire is connected to your black and then these other two don't matter if you happen to reverse those it's not a problem all right guys the last device i'm going to show you is the gfci outlet um, so this one you need to pay attention to when you're taking it apart I don't know if you can read this at not at the top, but this says line. So you need to make sure that when you take your other one apart that you're marking the line so you can get it on uh, this side of the outlet. So your gold's over here for your black wire, your silver's over here for your neutral, and your green's on top here for your ground. And down at the bottom, they got it, they come taped up typically. I'm gonna pull this tape off. But this side is your load. And hopefully you can see that and so you'll need to mark the wires that are for your load side same thing there's a silver for your neutral and your um, your gold for your black and then your ground goes up to the top now the way this works and the reason this is important so your power comes in from your panel to here and then this feeds on your load side feeds other outlets so that way this one GFCI outlet can protect many different outlets. So that's why it's so important to get them connected correctly. Once you put these in to test these, they do have a test button on them. You can use test to reset, or if you have one of these, of course, make sure the polarity is right and that indicates it's right. And this has a test button on it as well to test it. And you can see it trip and then you can hit the reset and it should be good. You should probably use this too to go around and check all your outlets once you're done just to make sure that everything is wired in correctly. So that's it. This project probably cost me $50 or less. Now this is a small apartment and I'm only counting two of the GFIs that we use out of the six pack, but it's probably $50 or less and it took me less than a couple hours to do that. And I think it made a huge improvement for that amount of money and effort. So hopefully this video helps you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and thank you for watching.